Oliver Glasner wanted to completely rip the blueprint that Crystal Palace and implement his own style of play, and I believe he could absolutely succeed in doing so because he's already got the right profile of players to fit his 3-4-2-1 system and implement a new attacking brand of football never seen before at Sellers Park. However, tactically and stylistically, it is a complete 180 to what his predecessor Roy Hodgson was doing with his Crystal Palace squad. And when you factor in that at this moment in time, Crystal Palace are precarious 5 points ahead of the relegation zone with 13 games left of the season, Glasner may have to sacrifice his long-term vision for how he sees his side playing in order for short term results. So in this video we're going to be discussing what I believe will be Glasner's first choice 11 going forward for the rest of the season assuming all his players are fit. And the first place we're going to start is in goal with the goalkeepers and this is arguably one of the hardest decisions Glasner will have to make at his time at Sellers Park. Does he go with Dean Henderson or does he go with Sam Johnson? Glasner likes his goalkeepers to be good with their feet and this might naturally lead you to think that Dean Henderson will be the obvious first choice for the number one goalkeeper. However he's having a really difficult time in between the sticks for Crusher Palace this season and in fact it's one where maybe Sam Johnson would be the number one. If you look at Henderson's stat for the season in the eight games he's played he's kept no clean sheets and has conceded 20 goals which is a goals against ratio per 90 of 2.5 with a save percentage of 57.8. And when you compare his save percentages to the other 36 Premier League goalkeepers used this season he's actually the fifth worst, the 32nd best in the Premier League this season and only Radu of Bournemouth, Valkadimos of Nottingham Forest, Olsen of Aston Villa and Sells of Nottingham Forest have a lower save percentage than him used this season. So that very much goes in Sam Johnson's favour. In the 17 games he's played so far this season, he's only conceded 23 goals, kept 5 cleats of Crystal Palace, a goals against ratio per 90 of 1.36 with a save percentage of 64.4. Now while these stats are better for Sam Johnson, they're not the best in the league. The best in the league is obviously Alisson Becker of Liverpool with a save percentage of 75.39% of his shots. However, Sam Johnston and Dean Henderson I both think are underperforming this season. Johnston's best save percentage in the Premier League was actually last season in the nine matches he played for Crystal Palace. In that season, he had a save percentage of 76%, which was outstanding one of the best in the league. And even before that, in the 2021 season for West Bromwich Albion, he had a save percentage of 71.4, which indicates that this season he is potentially underperforming. But so is Dean Henderson because in the 18 matches he played for Nottingham Forest last season when on loan from Manchester United, he had a save percentage of 65.9% which is significantly higher than it is at the moment. And the season before that when he played 13 matches for Man United, he had a save percentage of 73.5%, again drastically higher which shows I think that both Sam Johnson and Dean Henderson are massively underperforming what their potential could be. But for Gladstone he had to decide between one of these two goalkeepers and I think in the short term he's going to go for Sam Johnson in goal for the remainder of the season just because he needs to get points on the board and he needs to get away from the relegation zone. However, in the long run, I only see Dean Henderson having a future Crystal Palace and I don't see a future for 30-year-old Sam Johnson who'll be 31 by the end of the year. And although keeping clean sheets and keeping the ball out of the back of the net is a large responsibility for the goalkeeper, it's not just him that's responsible, it's also the defence in front of him because only the three teams in the relegation zone and Bournemouth have conceded more goals than Crystal Palace this season and with Glasner playing a three at the back system which would often be a five when they're defending deep but three in possession, it could lead to Crystal Palace shoring up the defence a lot more. When in possession of the board and building up from the back, Gladstone will want his back three to stay relatively close together and not spread out too far in case they do lose the ball and therefore they have numbers to be able to recover in that situation. But also when they're in possession and they get counter attack, he will want his wide centre backs to be able to cover the wide spaces and be able to be comfortable in defending in those areas one on one with the defenders. So. There's actually a lot of options for Glasner to go with in these departments. However, I don't think there's a lot of quality in that depth. And I think the three centre-backs that you go for are relatively straightforward. Because I think it is going to be Mark A, left centre-back, Joaquin Anderson, centre-back, and Chris Richards, right centre-back. And I think these two centre-backs complement each other really well as well. Because say, for example, another team has a goal kick or a set-piece. The ball comes in and I think Anderson is the perfect centre-back out of these three to go and challenge for that ball, go and try and win it against the opposition, striker or forward. And then if he were to lose it, then obviously you've got Gay and Richards you could sweep up in those areas with their pace and their ability to read the play. But not just that, I think these three in defence are actually really good on the ball for Chris Palace. Obviously we've seen Richards actually play in midfield at times under Roy Hodgson as either a defensive midfielder or a centre midfielder. So I think his ability to play from the back would be really crucial. We know the abilities Anderson has on the ball and his, I think his long raking passes either out to the left or the right could become a really beneficial for Palace as an attacking outlet. And we all know Mark Gay is very good on the ball as well himself being an England international as well. I think he's going to find this position absolutely a cup of tea and I think this actually perfectly suits all three of them. Now if we move on to the wing backs, the right wing back and the left wing back, I think there are very specific requirements required of Glasner of his wing backs and that's that they've got to cover the whole width of the pitch and I think it's going to be a really crucial area for Palace because 
If you don't have good wing backs, I don't think Crystal Palace will be able to implement the system effectively. They'll be responsible for covering this whole area of the pitch out on either side, as you can see here, highlighted here. And I think both defensively and offensively, they've got to be really good. So, who's it going to be? Let's start with the right wing back. And again, you've got a couple of options. The first one is Joe Ward. However, I think he's the least suited for this position. I think at 34 years of age, he's starting to slow down even more than he already was, which is an issue. So I don't think he's going to have the legs to go up and down the pitch and for 90 minutes like Glazer needs him to. I think actually right centre back might be a better option for him going forward. I think it would protect him a little bit more and he's also used to going out in those wide spaces. So that would be much better for him. A better alternative for me, I think is Nathaniel Klein at 32 years of age. I think I think he's more suited to playing right wing back he has done it a couple of times for Roy Hodgson obviously more on the defensive front rather than attacking but I think for Glasner he'll need somebody who can both do defensive and the offensive duties which I think the perfect option is Nathaniel Munez obviously signed in January from Genk and I think he's actually the perfect player for this position almost as if he was brought in for Glasner I think defensively and offensively and he can really bob up and down that right hand side for Christian Palace and I think he's perfect for it and obviously at left wing back I think the obvious option is Tyreek Mitchell but I do question his ability going forward and whether he can do it at a left wing back system for Glasner. In his debut season in the 2021 season he played 19 matches and he got one goal and one assist. In the 21-22 season he played 36 matches, got no goals and two assists. In the 22-23 season it was exactly the same, 36 matches, no goals, two assists. And then so far this season, in 24 matches played, he's got one goal and two assists. So, so far, it's his best attacking output so far. However, with three attacking returns, is it enough? It is going to be hard. And I think that for the remainder of the season, I think he will play Tyreek Mitchell there. However, you do have to question, maybe Jeffrey Schlupp would actually be a better option at left wing back. Obviously, he's been playing left wing at some times in the midfield as well. And I think it's one where he could be going forward, he could be a much better option. However, I think for the remainder of the season, I think Glasner might play it a bit safe. He might go for Mitchell and try and see if he can increase his attacking output through training on the pitch. But I think it's one where I think it should be Mitchell for now. But long term, you might have to question whether he could do the job. Next up, we have the two midfield positions. And I think this is going to be crucial to the way Glasner is going to play. Because with only two players in that midfield position, when they decide to go and tackle, when they decide to go and press, it's going to be crucial. And I don't think there'll be too much attacking from these two players because... Most teams against him will often play a through midfield and maybe they'll even invert another player from defence or one from the wide positions. So to be able to come against a 2 versus 3 or a 2 versus 4 sometimes against the top teams, they're going to have to really be defensively sound and aware of their positions. So I think these midfield positions are crucial for Glasner if he is to get any success out of this Crystal Palace side. But who goes into them? That's the big question. And the good thing for Glasner is I think in these positions, he's got some really good options. Obviously, you've got Czech Decore, you've got Adam Wharton, you've got Jaira Riedewald, you've got Jefferson Lerma, and you've got Will Hughes, all players you could play in these two positions. You can maybe even chuck in there Chris Richards, but I think maybe keep him at centre-back. You could potentially play Jeffrey Slub, but I think he's probably needed to deputise at left-wing back or maybe even further forward. But I think out of those five players I initially mentioned, I think to pick two, I think it's going to be hard. I think if everyone's fully fit, I think Czech Decore definitely has to play because I think he's Christian Palace's best defensive midfielder when he is fit. And alongside him, it's going to be tough. I really like Adam Wharton. I think his time at Blackburn Rovers is really underrated. I think it absolutely earned his move to Crystal Palace. I think it's one where he is going to be the future to Crystal Palace in midfield. If he's fit and he's firing, I think Jefferson Lerma could potentially be the player to go alongside Czech Decore. Obviously, he's a Premier League starter. He did a fantastic job for Bournemouth last season and season prior. And I think it's one where Czech Decore and Jefferson Lerma, could you imagine a more destructive Crystal Palace midfield? I'm wondering really well. I will say Adam Orton, I think, just misses out just because I think he's young and inexperienced. I think what Glasgow will want is results first thing and foremost. But I think long term, Wharton is definitely in that midfield. But for now, I'm going to have to go check to Gore and Jefferson Lerma if everyone's fit. Now we come on to the two wide positions flanking the number nine. And I think similar to the centre-backs, I think this is one of the most easy decisions you have to make. I think it's absolutely Mike Lise on the right and I think it's Eberet Chiesi on the left. The only question is for Glasner is injuries because if you can keep those two injury-free, they will be absolutely crucial for the way Crystal Palace play. And not only that, arguably they'll be further forward, closer to goal, where they're going to be most effective and most important for Crystal Palace. They'll be helping to score more goals, get more assists. And I think this is one where it's going to be extremely exciting because I think Glasner can get even more out of those two than Roy Hodgson was doing. I think for Crystal Palace under Roy Hodgson, they may be a bit conservative. I think Mike Lise especially he had to maybe track back his fullback as much as he needed to. And I don't think he was doing that too much, but I think he, he would have needed to do that less now with Glasner. I think it's one where they're going to be even more exciting. But the thing is, 
if they can be fit. There are huge injury issues around those two, and if they can get on the pitch at the same time. They've really played three or four matches together so far this season when they've started, and I think when they do start, they are so, so good. I think Crystal Palace's win rate with them is 50%, and the win rate without them is only 20%. So... Glasner needs him and he needs him fit, but I think those two in those positions are clear standout favourites. However, if you go at this moment in time, neither of them are fit. So who do you play instead of that? I think one of the players definitely has to be Jordan Ayew. I think he scored a fantastic goal against Everton on Monday night. But I think, you know, who plays on the other one? And I think one big thing is Matthias Franzer, because he, under Roy Hodgson, he hasn't been able to get too much game time. Roy Hodgson was saying, you know, he was didn't really fancy some of the younger players in the squad. But I think under Oliver Glasner, I think there's a real opportunity for Franzer to shine. And with Elise and Eze out at the moment, I think it could really be his time to step up and take that opportunity. And then last but not least, the number nine. Who do you go for? Do you go for Jean-Philippe Mateta with three goals and four assists in the Premier League this season? Or do you go with Alton Edward with six goals and no assists this season? Seven returns versus six attacking returns. Who do you go for? Well, I think it's tough. And I think it's, honestly, I think it is a bit of a coin flip. I don't think either are an outstanding option up front. I think it's one long term where Glasner will need to sign a number nine. However, obviously signing strikers who are maybe Premier League proven or going to do well in the Premier League are going to cost a lot of money. And will Chris Wallace invest that? Hopefully so for Chris Wallace fans. But I think... If I had to pick one, I'd go for Jean-Philippe Mateta. I think just his link-up play is a little bit better than Alton Edward. I think one while uh, Eze and Elise aren't fit, you could probably play both of them together. Maybe uh, Edward behind Mateta. I think that could be an option for Palace going forward. I think definitely in the short term. But I think in the long term, it would be Mateta and then Edward, and then potentially a num new number nine coming in. But for now, it would be Mateta. I think that completes the Crystal Palace 11. And it's one where it does look good on paper. And I think the players do fit the style of play that Glasner wants to play. And here's the team. If everyone was fit and available, this is what I think Oliver Glasner would do. What would be the obvious changes going into next season? I think one where you definitely need a new goalkeeper. Either where that's going to be Henderson, maybe when he's back in form a bit more. Or if it's going to be a new goalkeeper in general, we'll have to wait and see. I think three centre-backs, I think, are honestly some of the biggest strengths Christian Palace have. I think that all three of them are going to be absolutely fine. I think in midfield as well, Decore, Lerma, Wharton on the bench, Will Hughes. I mean, I think some great options there as well. Right wing back, I think Munez is going to be a fantastic option. I mean, obviously before, I mean, if you only had Klein and Ward, I think that would have been an issue. But Munez, I think definitely give him a chance. Left wing back, Mitchell I did go with, but I think, you know, I can see Jeffrey Schlupp playing there. Maybe one where Oliver Glasner is going to see how Mitchell is going to play. Can he get the best out of him going forward? We'll have to wait and see. But I think that's not a non-issue for now. I think the big issue is Elisa and Eze because they're not always fit. They're not always available. And if one of them goes, or maybe even both goes, God forbid, for Crystal Palace fans in the summer, then they're going to definitely need reinforcements and replacements for them because they're the two most crucial players. And without them, I don't think Crystal Palace stay in the Premier League. And then our friend, John Philly Mateta, could be Otten Edward, could potentially need a new player as well in general in the future. But I think it's one where in the summer, it'll be goalkeeper, maybe some centre-back depth, maybe some depth at left-back because Nathan Ferguson always gets injured as well. And some attacking options as well. I think those four areas of the pitch are definitely where Crystal Palace needs some reinforcements. But for now, here and now, Crystal Palace fans, how do you feel about Glasner coming in? Do you think it's going to be a bit like this? How do you think you would set up against Burnley for the first game? Big game, big crucial six-pointer. Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.